नमो तस् भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्ध स नमो तस् भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्ध स नमो तस् भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्ध स सो लास्ट टाइम आई डिस्कस्ड यू अबाउट द न्यूट्रिमेंट्स एंड द अदर थिंग्स सो नाउ वी गो अहेड इन दिस डिस्कोस एट श्रावती monks i will teach you dependent or origination and i will analyze it for you listen to that and attend closely i shall speak yes venerable sir those monks replied the blessed one said this and what monks is dependent origination it's anything that origin originates is dependent on something else so that is why it is called as dependent originations nothing origins origin originates on its own it has to depend on something if the dependency is reduced nothing will or originate that is the vice versa so with ignorance as condition formations come to be with formations consciousness comes to be so never whenever we are ignorant as condition ignorance is uh, whenever ignorance is as condition formations come to be that is the volition or the intentions they come to be with formations as conditions consciousness comes to be so we will go through the whole thing such is the origination of this whole mass of suffering what is the origination it depends upon something the whole mass of suffering it originates because of some cause and conditions and what monks is aging and death now we are going from behind from the back the last suffering is aging and death that is the dukkha so now we are going from behind the aging of various beings in the various orders of beings they are growing old broken of teeth graying of hair wrinkling of skin decline of vitality degeneration of faculties this is called aging so whenever we talk about dukkha dukkha is about aging about death about not getting what you want so this aging can also be about physical aging it can also be the aging of our own ideas which we give birth whenever there's an intention about having something that i want to do this or i want to have this that idea of craving when it starts every idea every thought whenever it originates it ends up in aging it is this physical body that we are already seeing that it is aging that is also dukkha but any any concept that we have in our mind whatever comes out sprouts out or anything that happens in our mind or on the physical body it has aging and that is dukkha any experience also has an aging so whenever we get excited about uh, experiencing something very new we feel that ah uh, that is so fun to experience something new and if supposing if you want to experience and travel just to experience something new but that also comes as an aging later on after the travel is over everything a uh, pleasurable experiences they also age away and that is dukkha and what monks is aging and death again i'll repeat this the aging of various beings in various orders of beings they are growing old broken of teeth graying of hair wrinkling of skin declining of vitality degeneration of the faculty this is called aging this is a very gross idea about aging the passing away of various beings from various orders of beings they are perishing breakups disappearing mortality death completion of time the breakups of aggregates the lying the laying down of the carcass this is called death thus this aging and this death are together called aging and death so aging is also there and death is also there whenever you it's about death we know that all our body organs get uh, they stop 
working that is also death or any other concepts even the relationship whenever you go into a really relationship it's so exciting it's so fun we feel that it's a pleasurable thing but everything comes to an end there is chutti that is a there is separation about everything and that is dukkha and what monks is birth the birth of various beings into various orders of beings they are being born descent into the womb production the manifestation of aggregates the obtaining of sense bases this is called birth and what monks is existence now existence again everything birth if you go to see a new child born is that is called birth even the birth of an idea a birth of a relationship a birth of anything any sense those pleasure that comes and it has an ending there are these three kinds of existence sense fear sense sense fear existence form sphere existence formless sphere existence this is called existence the form sphere existence in is the lower jhanas the first second third fourth jhanas and the formless sphere existence is the arupa jhanas the infinite space infinite consciousness nothingness neither perception or non perception so these are the existence these are the he has told about this and what monks is clinging there are four kinds of clingings clinging to sensual pleasures clinging to views clinging to rules and vows that is rites and rituals believing that rites and rituals will lead to nibbana or take you to nibbana so these are the right uh, views the concepts so mostly we cling why we want to do something because there's a story behind it so these uh, uh, rites and rituals they are very very difficult to come out of these clingings clinging to sensual pleasures at least we can understand that at least we can seek out we can come out of sensual pleasures but it's very difficult to come out of clinging to views or clinging to rules and vows clinging uh, clinging to the doctrine of self this is called clinging so again these are the small things and the clinging of uh, about i me myself so when whenever you say i want something that is the craving and clinging is that the story why you want that something so the energy becomes more stronger and when there is more of clinging then there is bhava the habitual tendencies then the comes the birth of action and then that lands to dukkha so i'll just go through the first the uh, from ignorance to the aging i will just read out that so because with ignorance as condition here you will see that dependent origin always repeated from all the angles so there's a lot of repetitions so because with ignorance as condition formations come to be with formations formations are intentions sankharas as condition consciousness comes to be with consciousness as conditions mentality materiality comes to be with mentality materiality as condition the six fold base comes to be with the six fold base as condition contact comes to be with context as condition feeling comes to be with feeling as condition craving comes to be with craving as condition clinging comes to be with clinging as condition being that is habitual tendencies comes to be with being as condition birth comes to be with birth as condition aging and death sorrow lamentation pain grief and despair comes to be so if you go for an a small example how it works in daily life in small small incidents i'll just see how it works i will just give an example you are just gone you are just uh, 
going here and there, uh, just having a small walk, or you're in the classroom, or you're reading something else, or you're talking with your friends in the hall. Okay? And there's a teacher over there, and you are just supposed to meditate. So you are just going to meditate. Before that, everyone is a little bit ignorant, right? So you are sitting in the hall, and uh, you come to know that uh, in this place, there are a lot of good uh, white colored peacocks. You have heard from this, okay? But somehow you have just come and talking with your friends and you are just strolling around, whatever. And you are in the hall under the supervision of the teacher. And you hear a sound of a peacock. There's a sound of a peacock. And you are ignorant that time. Ignorant in the sense, you are on your own. You are not meditating. You are not doing six hours or you are not practicing anything. So with that sound of the uh, peacock, immediately there will be a, because you are ignorant about the sound itself, you will start craving. So with this as conditions, formations come to be. The intention, now the intention immediately arises in your mind that you want to see the peacock. Right? Because you, there was a, just a contact of the sound in your ears, that the peacock sound. And then this sankhara of yours, the immediately intention that I want to go and see the peacock comes, okay? And there's a consciousness. Ah, here. Now your ear consciousness has arisen and then the mind consciousness comes up and then there's an intention that you want to go and see, okay? And because of that, that mentality and materiality, your, your body will start moving. You just want to get up. And you want to go and outside and to see the, this. So the feeling has started because you heard the sound. And now you want to take a photograph. The intention is to take the photograph. The feeling that I want to take the photograph that has started. Now there's a clinging. Why you want to take the photograph? Because every time whenever I go outside and I see birds and I want to take the photograph and want to show the my friends, there's a clinging about the story. Why you want to take the photograph? And then this clinging starts. And then there's a craving for this feeling. But there is a teacher in front of you and you cannot move out of the hall. Then what happens? The habitual tendency starts. You, the teacher, should understand that there's such a beautiful peacock coming. We never get to see a peacock. And this is habitual tendency of criticizing others. That will come up because the craving is so strong that you want to take the photograph of the peacock that you will start criticizing the, this. the teacher should understand this and this. And when we'll get a chance to see the peacock dancing in the rain and everything. All that will come in your mind because that is a habitual tendency of craving. Just there was a sound of the peacock and all these things have started because your intention was not towards loving kindness. If you were ignorant, ignorant about four noble truths, that the sound itself and the craving for the sound itself is dukkha. You were ignorant about that. So these things started coming up. In the birth of action, then you start thinking, where is your mobile? And, okay, even if the teacher allows you and you run to take the photograph and the peacock has disappeared by that time. So there is a dukkha. Or the peacock is there, but your mobile is discharged. Again, there is a dukkha. And even if you have the photograph of that this and get excited and if you want to show it to your friends and even if you show to your friends if they do not give thumbs thumbs up or appreciate again that is a dukkha so this the sound itself if you were meditating if you are aware you are not ignorant you would have seen oh this is just a sound i know it is of peacock that's it it's a sound it's a sound and i will not crave over it you just six hours, the craving of taking that photograph. 
you are out of suffering at that moment of time. A small example. So how these dependent origins for every minute, for everything there is, this works, this dependent origination. How the suffering, how we accumulate suffering because of this. And the uh, Bhante has given us such a good formula, six hours, that immediately if you do the six hours, you are out of suffering. Therefore, that moment, at least. So even this comes, any thought in your mind, clinging, any thought or view about someone or about rights and rituals, about this, any thought that comes up, it is a birth of a new dependent origination. And you're, if you do six hours that moment, if you relax, if you smile about this is just a thought or this is just a view, why take it personally? Then you're out of suffering in that moment. You're not clinging it anymore. And what wants? Now, after clinging, clinging depends upon craving. And what wants is craving. There are six classes of craving. Craving for form, craving for sound, craving for odors, craving for taste, craving for tangible objects, craving for mental phenomena. This is called craving. As I told you, the craving first starts and then the clinging comes. It's the I like it i don't like it at each one of the sense doors each one of the sense doors has the feeling and the craving right behind it so every sense doors we have that is the base that is materiality but the feeling behind the sense doors that is mentality so that is why we say mentality and materiality together so we have the sense sense doors eyes nose tongue, ears, and this body, and mental contents. So whenever, and they are, the feeling is just behind it. So whenever there's a contact on eye because of some object, there's a feeling. And our mind starts craving for that feeling. If it is pleasant, it starts hating if it is unpleasant. So mentality is the feeling. Feeling is not materiality. It is mentality. And materiality is each sense dose. Six sense dose. So each one of the six uh, sense dose has the feeling and craving right behind it. That is, this is why being able to recognize feeling that arises at each one of the sense dose is incredibly important. So whenever I told you the sound of the peacock making a noise came in your ears. If you have that feeling and immediately if you six hours, relax, smile, it is just a feeling. And you relax the tightness and tension of going and seeing that peacock once you have heard it, then you're out of suffering. As soon as you recognize a feeling, then you relax then, right then, then. And you don't have the craving or the rest of the end of the dependent origination arise. So immediately, so this is the spot. The feeling is the thing from where you have these two junctions. One is craving and the other is coming out of craving. So feeling is so important. That is why this relaxed step. You recognize the tightness, tension, relax and smile. There is the real pinpoint the gateway to come out of suffering. That is why your mind becomes, that is why your mind becomes pure. That's why your mind becomes clean. So as soon as you recognize that, then you relax right then. Only by relaxing, your mind becomes pure. This is how our mind becomes clean. Because you have let go of all concepts, you are seeing this process as a process. It's not personal. These things all arise because of condition. This is no me. There is no I in any of this when you let go at craving itself. So craving, the moment that feeling become arises and you know it, why take it personally? It is just a feeling. It is just an experience. 
recognize, release, relax, smile, then you are out of craving that time. So we are destruct. This whole discourse is about destruction of craving. Now, this craving depends upon feeling. And what monks is feeling? There are six classes of feeling. Feeling born out of eye contact, feeling born out of ear contact, feeling born out of nose contact, feeling born out of tongue contact, feeling born, born out of body contact, feeling born of mind contact. This is called feeling. So there are different, as we said, the fire. This fire comes because of the grass fire or the log fire or this, um, what do you call it? Any other fire, cow dung fire. The same way, this feeling. There are different six classes of feeling. One is from whenever you have any contact from your eye, there's a feeling behind it. Whenever there you have a contact from your ear, there's a feeling behind it. Same with one out of mind contact also. Any thought arises in your mind, there's a feeling. If you have a very pleasant thought coming up in your mind, there will be a pleasant feeling in your body. And what monks is contact. There are six classes of contact. Again, the same thing. Because of the six sense doors, we have feeling, six sense doors, we have contact. Eye contact, ear contact, nose contact, tongue contact, body contact, mind contact. This is called contact. And what monks are six sense bases? The eye base, again, the contact depends upon mentality and material. That is, we have the six saliva. Sorry, we have this saliva. Uh, The contact depends upon saliva. That is, we have this six sense bases. The eye base, the ear base, the nose base, the tongue base, the base, the body base, the mind base. These are called the six sense bases. And what monks is mentality, materiality, feeling, perception, volition, contact, attention. This is called mentality. First, we'll, uh, I'll just complete this. The four great elements and the form derived from the four great elements. This is called materiality. Thus, this mentality and materiality are together called mentality and materiality. Now, mentality, we'll see about mentality. Feeling, as I told you, there's a feeling right behind every sense dose. The so sense dose are materiality. But the feeling behind the sense dose is mentality. So they always tied up together. Feeling immediately is tied up with perception. You immediately recognize that feeling. Ah, this feeling is pleasant or unpleasant. So there's a perception. That perception. And then the volition. So the mind is also made up of volition, your intentions, volition, your intentions, that is the formations or the sankharas. Means anybody who has this past life sankharas, the past life, I told you, ignorance and then sankharas, they are from past lives. So your mind is made up of those sankharas. If you have those types of volition, if you see your own intentions, that is sankharas. And accordingly, you will be able to perceive that feeling. Now, if, if there is a fragrance, and I'm not uh, very fond of fragrances, some other person who is very fond of fragrances, so he will have that intention, ah, I want it more. But if I am not fond of fragrances, I will say I'm not interested at all. I do not want it. See, means the intention or the volition of every person is different. That is why the reactions of every person is different. Even if you see the same thing or even if you feel or experience the same thing, some people will not like it, some people will like it. Because the uh, volition, the feeling will be the same but the perception and the volition will be different. That is how then your reaction starts. That is how then your attention, 
some people will have more attention to what they feel very nice some people will have more attention different attentions because every person is having a different volition itself when you have a feeling arise it always seems to be that the materiality doesn't it's the mental feeling even though it is at each center that is why two things are together so mentality and material always together <clears throat> so there is a dependency of mentality and materiality they depend on each other for existence if there is no mentality there is no use of materiality even if you have eyes but if you do not have the feeling you are do not have the eye consciousness feeling then there is no use there will be no eye contact and there will be no other other things that is why is a dead body has all the things they have the eyes the nose but there is no feeling there is no a mentality mentality is gone away that is why we said that this body even if it is there it has no feelings at all and monks and what monks is consciousness there are six classes of consciousness eye consciousness ear consciousness so again this as i told you mentality materiality depends upon consciousness six classes of consciousness eye consciousness ear consciousness nose consciousness tongue consciousness body consciousness and mind consciousness this is called consciousness if there is no consciousness there will be no further this a dependent origination supposing you have this eyes and you have the sense uh, object but your mind is somewhere else you are seeing a movie uh, you are seeing the things happening your eyes are stuck to that uh, movie but your mind there's some thought and your mind is gone so even if there's a eye consciousness there's a eye based con uh, object but there is no consciousness there are eyes sense door the movie is there in front of you there is sense door object but your mind is wandering somewhere else then there will be no contact so there is no consciousness eye consciousness over there so mind consciousness is going on it is gone in something in some other object that is why while you are meditating our intention is to be in loving kindness and your mind consciousness is working over there and your mind wanders it the mind attention has gone to the hindrances so we six hours and again come back this is how we are working so your mind consciousness also moves here and we have to bring it back that is the attention and what monks are the formations there are these three kinds of formation the bodily formations the verbal formation the mental formations these are called the formations formations that are, are the intentions or sankharas or you can say even volitions so these sankharas also they come from past lives out of this life and we if you go with the same tendency supposing if you now what are uh, they said bodily formations so there are three types of sankara the bodily formation the verbal the mental if now if you see everyone is walking in a different way now the walking is the same but because of their bodily formations because of their uh, conditionings previous lives conditioning some will be walking very arrogantly if they are how is their sankharas how is their behavior formation some people will be walking very humbly some people will be walking looking here looking there very distracted so it depends upon again the sankharas so this this sankhara it uh, manifest on the bodily formations also the way of speaking or the way of talking everyone is uh, different why because of the formations bodily formations or the sankharas 
the verbal formations. Someone will talk in a certain manner, very arrogantly, or someone will talk in a very different way or confusing way. All these are why people are different from each other because of their uh, conditionings, uh, you say the formations or the sankharas that they have carried from past lives. Even if you go to see different children, they are just born, but their way of everyone moving is in a different way. And the mental formations, which are very important. The mental formation is more important. How, if with any anything as a trigger, different people will react in a different way. Why? Because of these sankharas. Because they are past conditionings. How is their past conditionings? They will react in a different way. This is how, and in while meditating, while doing six hours, we are every time we are conditioning, we are changing our conditions. We are coming back to loving kindness. This is how we are progressing. We are changing our sankharas. Sometimes a thought will come in your mind, a very negative thought, and you recognize, release, relax, and again come back. So the conditioning of your past life was sankhara was to go towards negativity or go towards hindrance. But with efforts, the right efforts, we are again coming back to loving kindness. And doing six hours, coming to un from unwholesome, we are coming to wholesome. This is how we are changing the wheel of Dhamma in our own self. This is what the change of wheel of Dhamma is. Whenever our mind goes to unwholesome things, we have to come back to the wholesome. And this is how we are going to change our sufferings or coming out of Dukkha. And what monks is ignorance or the Sankharas is one of the Sankharas, as I told you, just volition. They depend upon ignorance. So what is ignorance? Not knowing suffering. Not knowing the origin of suffering. Not knowing the cessation of suffering. Not knowing the way leading to the cessation of suffering. This is called ignorance. That is not knowing the whole noble truth. If a person, now as I told you the same example, if a person is meditating and a little bit more aware about the four noble truth, immediately, and he is not ignorant, and he knows that there's a sound of a peacock on his ears, and he's aware, he's mindful, he knows that there's a feeling, and he just six hours, relax, smile. So definitely there will be no suffering that he doesn't have to uh, make a, this habitual tendency about criticizing the person who is not allowing him to see the peacock or whenever there will be no problem even if he thinks about going and taking the photograph and the peacock has vanished. So there will be no dukkha at all if he immediately understands that this is just a sound. Even if he understands this is the sound of a peacock, so what? Not to make a big issue about it. He relaxes, releases and smiles. That is the time when he'll come out of, he's not ignorant. He knows, even if I have this craving, it is going to end in suffering. What is the use? So, because the craving it doesn't stop only by listening or seeing the peacock. He wants to take the photograph. He wants to show it to his friend, make them jealous about it. And then again, we only suffer because no one appreciates us. And even if they appreciate Again, the second time we want to do the same mistake to get that appreciation feeling and we like that feeling of appreciation. That is why again and again we do the same mistakes because we actually crave for the feeling of appreciation from others because of this, from this small example I'm telling you. It is not about the peacock. It's not about seeing the peacock. It is just to tell others how I saw the peacock. Oh, you know, to feel better. That, see, I was the person who saw the peacock and I was so happy and doing all those things and then telling it to others because we like the craving of the feeling and not the outside object. So, thus monks with ignorance as condition. Now, again, there's a repetition from the beginning to the end. Formations come to be. 
with formations as conditions, consciousness comes to be. With consciousness as condition, mentality, materiality comes to be. With mentality, materiality as condition, six sense doors come to be. With six sense doors as condition, contact comes to be. With contact as condition, feeling comes to be. With feeling as condition, craving comes to be. With craving as condition, clinging comes to be. With clinging as condition, habitual tendencies come to be. With habitual tendencies as condition, birth comes to be. With birth as condition, aging and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair comes to be. So if you take any, it's any example from any six sense doors, they are going to end up in suffering. If you are not aware, if you are not mindful, if you do not relax, the feeling, even if there's a pleasant thought, we have seen people suffering from overthinking. Even if there's a pleasant thought and we keep on thinking about it and then finally we get even bored about it or we start craving and that thought never comes to into existence. It's just a thought. So it's a mental sensual pleasures. There are so many people who uh, enjoy in their dreaming stage. They dream about this, they dream about that and they feel very enjoyable. But then when they try to bring it into existence, it is always a suffering. But any dream also, it comes to an end. So anything that comes up, pleasurable things on the, we feel it is pleasurable, but it doesn't last long. And that is Dukkha. Because everything is so impermanent. Such is the origin of the whole mass of suffering. So once we start understanding, craving itself is suffering. Not being happy with what you are at that present moment. If you are not mindful. And if you are not with your loving kindness or with the Brahmaviyas or any meditation object. And you want something else. That is suffering. But with the reminderless fading away and cessation of ignorance comes the cessations of formations. But if you are not ignorant, if you are mindful, and if you are with your loving kindness, so the feeling inside is only joyful and doesn't fade away. So that is how there is a cessation of suffering. So even if your body is aging, even if there are a, a very a discomfort everywhere, but if your mind is very much, you are very much mindful, you are very much aware, you are very much into tranquility or into samatha or equanimity. That is happiness. So everything ceases, ceases over there. The craving, there is no craving. You are just being with what, whatever it is. And your mind is very equanimous. There is, this is the only gateway towards Nibbana. That you are in Nibbana when you are into Equanimity. That is mundane nibbana. You are not craving. You are not with your any hindrances. You are completely with your uh, loving kindness, radiating. And the final radiation is about uh, equanimity. You are already into nibbana. So that is the end of the suffering. But it's a very mundane. It's a very small nibbana. But you are still happy. And your happiness doesn't depend upon anything. It means you are independently happy. And that is what we are real achieving. Independence in the true sense. Independently happy. It's not, your happiness is not depending on, on anything. You're just your mind is quiet. It doesn't want to go here or there. It doesn't want to crave for anything. That itself is happiness. And you're out of suffering. At Shavati, monks, I will teach you the wrong way and the right way. Listen to that and attend closely. I will speak. Now again, there's a wrong way and right way of living. So wrong way, as you know, that it is when you're ignorant. And right way, when everything ceases, you are not ignorant. And then uh, the, there is no uh, origination about suffering. So suffering doesn't originate at all. You're just with what you are there. 
So that is the right way. A wrong way is explained. So there's a repetition. Huh? Please don't mind about this repetition because the suttas, uh, they are like that only. 15 minutes to work. So at Shravati, monks, I will teach you the wrong way and the right. Listen to that. Attend close. I will speak. Yes, venerable sir, those monks replied. The blessed one said this. And what monks is the wrong way? Ignorance as condition. Again, if you're ignorant, you're not mindful. You're ignorant. You're not mindful about the mind's moving going here and there. Your attention is in the hindrances. That means you are ignorant. If your attention is towards loving kindness, you are in the object of meditation. You are big six hours and very much mindful about your mind's moving. And you are equanimous about whatever arising and passing away. Then you are not ignorant. But if you are ignorant, ignorant about a four noble truth, about suffering, about craving, then what happens? Ignorance as condition. Formations come to be. That means you have volitional or you have sankharas. Because we were ignorant for so many lives. We were not into knowing about uh, four noble truths. Or in, our intentions were not clear. 100%. Even now, if our intentions are towards 100% towards uh, Nibbana, we will not waste a single moment. And you are you have achieved me. But our intentions keep changing because of our sankharas. Our sankharas, whatever sankharas we have made. That is why sometimes we want to do this, we want to do that, we want to... Still, even if you are knowing all these things, why we are not becoming, uh, not achieving Nibbana? Because our intentions are not that strong. Our parmis are not that strong. That is why still there is ignorance in us, even though we know about it. With ignorance as conditions, formations come to be. We are ignorant and our mind goes to, to some craving about the any sensual pleasures and that type of intentions we have. And we see it's not enough of Dhamma, enough of meditation. And then we want to just go here and talk here and talk about anything else or see a movie. And again, we fall into formation. The intentions are not clear. Formations come. And with formations as condition, consciousness. So that type of consciousness. If your mind is somewhere else, then that type of consciousness. Then you will like to hear, listen to some music. So your ear consciousness has arisen. This monk is called the wrong way. So as we have discussed, ignorance as conditions, formations, formations as conditions, consciousness, consciousness as conditions, mentality, materiality. Then we have this sixth sense dose, then the contact, feeling, craving, clinging, habitual tendencies, birth of action, and aging and death. So that. So that everything is a wrong way. Why is that the wrong way? This monk is called the wrong way. And what monks is the right way with reminderless fading and cessation of ignorance comes cessation of formations. Here is the starting point of the right way. If you are mindful, if you are continuously mindful, continuous, continuity of the practice is the real essence of success. If you are continuously mindful, there is no ignorance at all. So cessations of formations. The formations, even if they, because of past sankharas, you will have intentions of going. But still, if you're mindful, you'll do six hours and come back to the mindfulness. You're continuously doing. So there is no formation at all. With the cessation of formations, cessation of consciousness. See, if you're meditating, and even if the voice comes, you will not have any formation, not have any intentions to see, go and see the peacock because there is no craving at all. So you will stay there. So there's cessation of formation, cessation of consciousness. With the cessation of consciousness, cessation of mentality and materiality, there will be no feeling. If there is no contact, consciousness, there will be no need to have mentality and materiality. You just sit your eyes closed, you not need to feel 
eyes open also. Even if there's a consciousness on the ear, there is no feeling to open your eyes and see that peacock. With the cessation of mentality, materiality, cessation of six, six fold ways, there is no need to open your eyes or no need to have that peacock in front of you to make you happy. With the cessation of six fold ways, cessation of contact. When there is no need to open your eyes, there is cessation of contact. There will be no contact to see the peacock. With the cessation of contact, cessation of feeling. If there is no contact, there is no feeling at all. You will not have any feeling if you do not open your eyes or run to see that peacock. There will be no feeling. If there is no feeling, cessation of craving. There is no craving in you. If there is no feeling, on what will you crave for? There is no craving. Even if, you know, if you feel that, if you see the peacock, there is no need to open your eyes and there is no need to see the peacock. If there is no, if you do not see the peacock, you will not have any kind of feeling. And if the cessation of feeling, cessation of craving, there is no craving. With the cessation of craving, cessation of clinging. So there is no clinging. There is no thing to tell that I want to show my friends or anything. There is no clinging. With the cessation of clinging, cessation of habitual tendencies. If there is no clinging, then the same habitual tendency of taking the photograph and sending to the friends and everything and taking the appreciation, there is nothing about it. It stopped. Cessation of habitual tendencies. With the cessation of habitual tendencies, cessation of birth. If there is no <laughs> habitual tendency, there is no birth of new action. There will be no ideas, new ideas about showing off uh, new peacocks or photos of your this. So there is no idea about uh, the, that idea is seized with the cessation of birth, cessation of aging and death. So even if there is no birth, so there is definitely no aging, no death, no sorrow, no lamentation, pain, grief and despair. Such is the cessation of whole mass of suffering. This monk is, this monks is called the right way. So we'll stop here. We have seen how the things, how the suffering ends because of the destruction of craving. The middle point, till feeling, it is, it comes, you have no control over it. Till feeling. That is, and after feeling, yes, if you're mindful and if you do six hours, you are out. That time you are not ignorant. You are mindful. And when you are mindful, even if you have those sankharas of jumping and craving and seeing this and that, but if you are mindful and doing six hours, you are definitely taking a other direction that is the right way to live. And then there is no suffering. So this is how it works. The suffering depends upon everything. The cessation also depends upon cessation of previous origination. This is how it works. So any questions from your side? If you go to see for every incidence, every idea, every sense-based contact, if you're very alert, there is less suffering. Supposing if anyone talks bad to you in front of you and immediately you recognize, release, relax, smile. So you have stopped the birth of more aversion, of more dis destruction towards your own self. Because someone has told you bad something, it has come because of your past karmas. That feeling is there, but you are economous, you are very much mindful and you are not reacting. And you know it will pass. Everything that arises, it passes away. Everything is conditioned in that way. So if you are not reacting, that will pass. The cessation is there. So there is no more birth of action if about your own reactions. So that is how you are going towards Nibbana. 
these are very small small subtle things there are no questions let us share merits may suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless may the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief may all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha of this message. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Mamita Naji.